If you're floating past on the VLE or floated past on YouTube, a very warm welcome. And my name is Rory Lees Oaks, and today we're looking at criticisms of person centered therapy. Um, what I'd like to do first of all is look at Carl Rogers, he's considered the creator of person centered therapy, and in particular, the necessary and sufficient conditions for therapeutic change. Now, Rogers talks about empathy, congruence, and unconditional positive regard. And he put great stock on these necessary and sufficient conditions. Now, there are six conditions that he talks about, but it's widely recognised that these three conditions, in terms of empowering clients to change and the therapy starting to um, allow the client to understand who they are and remove emotional blockages, they're important. Empathy, as I said, is about trying to see the world through the client's eyes. Congruence is being genuine, so the therapist isn't a, an expert or it doesn't put a facade on. An unconditional positive regard, Rogers described as prizing the client, as um, client being the centre of the therapist's world for as long as the therapy is in motion, so through that therapeutic hour. So what are the mainstream criticisms? Well, probably one of them is what's called Midwestern optimism. Carl Rogers grew up in an America that was very optimistic, at least for some people, as we can see from this picture. Certainly some sections of American society were treated entirely different to others. But it's fair to say that uh, the America that Carl Rogers grew up in had a pioneering spirit, uh, a self-reliant spirit, um, a spirit of optimis optimism. Um, so the therapy really fitted the zeitgeist, the, 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 the theme or the feeling of the time. And as a consequence, um, it may not transmit very well over to Europe, certainly in the, in the 40s and the 50s, that were still ravaged by war. Um, and I'm going to look at that, that kind of idea a little later on in the presentation. But it is a very, very American therapy. That's not a criticism in itself. But I asked, I asked the question, does it travel well? Does it travel over to Europe where people may have a different view of the world? Um, in 1992, um, an author called Jeffrey Masson, himself trained as a psychoanalysist, um, wrote a book called Against Therapy. And one of the criticisms that he put against person-centred therapy, in fact, he criticised all therapies, was that he said no one could ever in real life do the things Rogers prescribes that the therapist should do. If the therapist manages to do so in a session, if he appears to be all accepting and all understanding, this is merely artifice, not a reality. And what Masson's saying is that is it possible for, for therapists to always show the core conditions? And if they do that, are they actually being genuine and real? Or are they just putting it on for the time the therapy is in place? Masson also discussed, um, face with a brutal rapist who murders children, why should any therapist have unconditional regard for him. Notice he doesn't use the word positive. And um, I think that this, and I'm not the only person to say it, I've recently read this in a book, is that this isn't a failure of the theory, it's a, it's a, a lack of ability for the therapist to be able to offer these core conditions. So it may be another therapist can, and certainly as someone who's trained therapist for a few years, um, some people can work with people who've committed sex offences, other therapists can't. So is it a, a criticism of the theory or is it an observation that not all therapists can work with certain presentations? Brian Thorne, who's um, a biographer of Carl Rogers, um, writes in his, his book, um, Carl Rogers, strangely enough, um, for the class little behaviourist, his belief in the subjective core of human personality is unprovable hypothesis which binds him to the overriding influence on environmental conditions and behavioural reinforcements. So I'll just decode that a little bit. The best way to describe this is if, if any of you drive, if anybody watching this drives, 
you'll know that we have speed cameras and I've often watched people driving clearly over the speed limit so as they approach a the camera you see them apply the brakes vigorously the brake lights will go on sometimes the bonnet of the car will dip there may be a screech of tires possibly and I guess the behaviorist would say is are you driving under the speed limit because you feel that that's a socially acceptable thing to do that's a pro-social behavior or are you doing it for fear of getting caught are you fearful that you'll get caught and the cameras will pick you up and for behaviorists this is what we would call punishment and reward uh, the punishment for driving through the speed camera is you get a ticket and you have to pay a fine and you could lose your license if you do it often enough uh, and the reward for not doing it is the opposite basically that you you keep your license and you don't pay a fine and the idea that people are good um, for some behavior psychologists um, they say it's unprovable how do you how do you prove that, that that people are basically good where's the where's how do you evidence it um, cognitive behavioral therapists cognitive is thinking behavior is how you act say there's not um, in, insufficient attention to the relationship between the thinking and the behavior um, and certainly for clients who present with uh, alcohol and drug misuse issues who need help um, it's it's possible to say that person-centered therapy probably wouldn't be much help to them they would need something with more structure something that would give tasks and strategies to avoid um, to avoid falling into patterns of behavior which were damaging um, and Brian Thorne actually goes on in this chapter that I've taken this little piece out of to um, argue against these claims. He's, he's playing devil, devil's advocate, if you like. So if you buy Brian Thorne's book, you can see actually some of the, the arguments he uses against what he's already written. So in summary, well, person-centered therapy lacks techniques. There's no homework. There's no... Uh, there's no kind of uh, analysis or diagnosis. It does not offer intervention, which is rather like what I've just talked about. There's no diagnosis or, or um, kind of uh, educative function of it. It doesn't give you tips to do things differently. Um, it may not be suitable for certain presentations. We've talked about alcohol and drug misuse. Um, certainly for people who've got um, mental illness um, such as schizophrenia and that they're you know having psychotic episodes and, and they suffer from bouts of uh, very um, debilitating psychosis certainly person sensor therapy may not be very useful although having someone to visit them who shows the core conditions may actually you know in the long run prove useful but it wouldn't offer a, a cure as such um, one of the main criticisms it relies on the therapist not a strategy and lots of people who train watch Carl Rogers videos read the book um, there's no template for therapists in person sense of therapy there's certain training that therapists undertake but no one actually quite knows what Rogers was getting at they understand the the, the, the kind of conceptual part of it but everybody's different uh, the way Rogers um, does it on the videos isn't the way that some person sensor therapists do it now and it might be that with as with all therapists not just person centered that a client may have to visit one or two therapists to find someone who suits them um, and that's a criticism I guess of all therapies really it, it, all therapies rely to some extent on the relationship doesn't matter how directive or strategized the therapy is you have to trust the therapist you have to at least be able to get on with them and at the very best hopefully like them um, but it's more important in person sense of therapy because the relationships everything um, there's no overemphasis on humans being good Rogers believe that people are basically good and um, that's still a huge debate what does good mean um, it's 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 not provable it's it's very for some people it's to be very woolly and rogers himself there's i've read literature recently that said rogers accepted this but he still 
he still kind of had this as a main tenant of his theory, if you like. And eventually the American optimism versus European pessimism debate. Um, it was a very Midwestern idea of, of self-actualization, of um, self-belief, um, of um, personal growth. And it was really the kind of thing that America was founded on, if you think of the people with the wagon trains who went west. And the whole America was, was built really on that. And does it transpose to Europe in the 1950s? Um, possibly not. Possibly it does. I don't know. Um, Europe would have been a very different place to America in the 1950s, that's for sure. And, um, and European pessimism um, is, a, a, is, a, is attributed to Freud's idea of people being basically not very good or evil in some cases and that they have to um, control their impulses, um, for want of a better better phrase. So person sensor therapy was, was very American in its in its development. Um, finally, I found this lovely um, quote if you like from Lotus Link or Lotus Inc co.uk and with any therapy it's best fit with clients clients who have a strong urge in the direction of exploring themselves and their feelings and who value personal responsibility may be particularly attracted to person centered approach um, those who would like counselors to offer extensive advice to diagnose their problems or to analyze their psyches will probably find person centered approach less helpful and you know for some people who want help with things like addictions obsessive behaviors of irrational fears fear of you know things like flying cars um, there's there's a whole panoply isn't there of, of fears that people have which could be thought as irrational they may be drawn to a more strategized type of therapy um, and clients who would like to address specific psychological habits or patterns of thinking may so find some variation in the helplessness help fullness of the person-centered approach as individual therapeutic styles of person-centered counselors very wide very, very widely some may feel more comfortable than others to engage directly with these types of concerns um, and i think that's as much about the counselor as it is about the the clients some counselors are happy to to work in a person-centered way with with presentations others aren't um, and I also think that clients themselves um, may want to pick a therapist they can trust. But that goes for any modality of therapy. And I really do believe that the person-centered underpinning of congruence, unconditional positive regard, and being genuine uh, should be qualities in any kind of therapist, in any kind of modality of therapy. So... If you're watching on the VLE, um, if you click the red arrow, the little information tab at the top, you get taken to another resource. And if you download the PowerPoint, there's two clickable hyperlinks on the PowerPoint that'll take you to some more resources. I'm afraid that if you're watching on YouTube, you'll have to write them down. And finally, thank you for watching. <laughs>